All right, so I'm not gonna go super in depth, but basically what's going on is the batteries are not holding a charge. I think it was basically a lot of the programming originally was not proper and we are gonna add more PV for recuperation, but we're gonna remove these batteries, put it, uh, scoot the controller over somewhere, put a GSL or a uh, Flexbar 1000 in here for all the battery distribution, um, put four lithium batteries, replace this, and then clean up some of the wiring and stuff that was in here. So. All in all, they didn't do a bad job with their initial construction, but we're gonna try to clean this up a little bit and uh, make it more usable. Fused, and then each one had a set of cables going inverter and it was paralleled actually on the battery um, what I opted to do was remove all that um, I extended the gutter a couple feet put a flex row 1000 this could be our new distribution point we're gonna add some solar we have a spot for two more batteries if we want um, we kind of are a little bit more versatile with what we have doing it this way and it's safer because what we can do is we can turn off like um, we can turn off this battery that battery any of these batteries at one time by the flip of a breaker and so it gives us a little more serviceability and a little better access to it. Um, so basically what's happening is um, every battery has its own cables going in, uh, goes to a breaker, and then it ties in on a shunt so that way the controller can watch the power flow going in and out of the batteries to make sure that the state of charge is always really done well. Um, this was a pretty easy upgrade and the hardest part was really just doing the labor, uh, getting the batteries up there. We did buy a hydraulic lift that's made it easier. Um, this is round one. I'm gonna come back in a week or two. And so one of the things that we have is this is the AE bus base discover battery. So we can come in here and we can jump this off to a comm box and then link all the AE buses from each battery. So battery one, battery two, battery three, battery four. Um, and that's gonna allow us to expedite the data um, to the cloud. So I think what I'm gonna do is just come in here and then put a receptacle and a comm box and I have to do a little um, 12 volt uh, AC to DC transformer to inject power into the ZAN bus. And that's gonna hopefully get us some better data, you know, into the internet to see what's going on. Now, the other thing, I like the Flexbar 1000s. You guys see these a lot in my installs. Um, it is a little bit tight. It could be a little bit wider, but you can see here we have all of our breakers. I did 175s, so we'll never hit this potential. Um, and so each battery has its breaker. They're, these things are 130 amps continuous, but they can surge higher than that. Um, but with this system design, I never expect them to hit that. We only have two radians. Um, each one can do 250 surge. So, you know, we're well within the means of what that'll do. And then of course we got the room down below to add other stuff. Uh, a couple other things I'm gonna change when I come back is I think I'm gonna order a bracket so we can hang the made up higher. It was just screwed to a two by four. Yeah, that's really not the best way for that case. So um, they have, I, I don't know how much they have for PV. I think it's like 4K or something like that. Um, but right now it's kind of overcast and uh, we got the batteries up to about 53.6 and we're doing about, I don't know, a thousand watts each, a little over that. So let's go back to the back of the house and we'll go take a look and I'll show you guys what the solar is. But again, this was a uh, upgrade from AGM lead acids to lithium iron with Discovery, yes, let's go take a look at the back. All right, well, the pool pump's running, so it's a little bit noisy, but um, up on top of the roof, these are pretty flat, which it does not help the wintertime power production of this house, but it's a vacation place and it doesn't get used very often. So they have the sun power panels up there. They came in and they dropped down 
And again, I didn't build this original system. I'm just starting to do the upgrades on it. Um, the generator, they've lost now two generators. Uh, the Kohler 14 RES is dead. So we're actually gonna come in here and I think we're gonna put one of the uh, Kohler 24 or 30 KW um, liquid cooled propane generators and uh, get this thing a little bit more reliable. We're gonna do that and then I think we're gonna add 24 more panels so that it can do air conditioning. Uh, this is a super cool contemporary home. I couldn't wait to come and uh, to work on this place that did make the cover a Dwell magazine one point in time. Um, just because it's such a neat design, the interior of it's awesome. We're lucky that we get to stay here, or I'm lucky that I get to stay here while I'm working on it. But uh, this is Lake Berryessa. They got some beautiful views. Yesterday there was military bomber planes flying through the canyon. So that was a pretty good, pretty good show. But there you go. That's kind of that's kind of it. Even the shop's awesome. I'd love to have this shop. All right, signing out. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.